You're asking for backlash. It's an entire imaginary world where this person, this guy is a king and everyone else is a little peon. To say the Steam ratings is 100% is political is just actually deranged and, and just Quite weird. Violent. But it's worth remembering that these people are ultimately fucking pathetic. So, what is Domina? Domina is a gladiatorial management simulator set in the theme of the Roman period. In the game you will find that wine is cheap, but life is even cheaper, and that the arena needs to be fueled by both for profit. Throughout the game you're calculating your resources and the people you have available, towards the possible profits and the possible losses available in the arena. Sometimes you will have to sacrifice a gladiator for compensatory rewards. Others skip it completely with no rewards, no losses, but at least life in your hands. Some fights will be clear victories. Others having challenging forces facing each other till one die. All of this in the hands of the player to manage. This video will be covering the Steam edition of the game, which is currently delisted for reasons expanded upon later in this video. As the game has a controversial history, and some details of what was to happen in the details of the game. But for now, let's jump into the gameplay. In the game you play as someone holding the position of Latina and Domina at the same time. Name does not matter as a new one is generated each time you play. There exist two different modes of playing the game. One is endless and one is game. And the game one is the campaign. Throughout both modes, you will have to deal with the slave trade to acquire gladiators and deal with the arena to earn profits. You also have to deal with your limited resources. Food to eat, water to drink, wine for feasts and bribery, and also, most important, coins for everything. You also have to deal with two politicians, one senator and one general, in competition about the services you offer the entertainment you offer, and the manpower available at your hands. But be careful, both of them are in charge of organizing the games. If they feel slighted, they might take advantage of their positions, give you unfair matchups and unjust rewards. You also have to maintain your looters, which is your gladiatorial school. This includes maintaining your employees, giving them wages, food and water for the day. In exchange, of course, for their services, which might be resource production, weapons, training, and more. Of course, the arena close to you is not the only one. Nor do you have the only champions, as you will need to travel to face other champions in other arenas. Whilst you are playing, the gods are also looking, giving you the availability to randomly gain boons from the gods, blessings from Jupiter, to apply on your gladiators and your employees. All of this is to serve the centerpiece of the game, the gladiators. The gladiators have 5 skills to level and 4 stats to be observed. Agility for speed, weapons for damage, defense for obvious reasons, strength for health, and meditate for AI sharpness, strength and intellect. The 4 skills to be considered is aggro for aggression, Turtle for protection, evasion for dodging, and stamina for energy. There is also the health and mood to keep your eyes upon, as an unhealthy slave can develop permanent disabilities, and an unhappy one might develop unexpected consequences. The player take all of this into account when acquiring assets for his looters and bringing them into the arena. So what is the story of the game? Is there any story to be told? The story is rather simple. It's towards the end of the Roman Empire. To quote the game, the sun is setting upon the Roman Empire. Violent rebellion erupts in the far territories while political corruption erodes the empire closer to home. Fearing a revolt, the emperor intends to distract the population with the greatest gladiatorial championship 
the Empire has ever seen, promising unimaginable rewards of coin and glory. The Emperor hopes to revitalize commerce and establish the rule of law once again, but Rome is disintegrating in his clenched fist. It may be your last chance for glory in Rome. The next local games are scheduled soon, and you aim to win. You play as a domina who has recently inherited her ludus from her father. As you balance trade between humans and lives, deal with politics, improving your ludus, dealing with employees and competition, and prove yourself to be the best gladiatorial manager with the best gladiatorial team, you will find yourself stabbed in the back by the fearing competition. Do quote the game. Because you have achieved victory in the arena and proven your worth as a master of men, your competitor has felt threatened all year. The scheming rat has betrayed you. While you were in Rome, he managed to convince the magistrate and the legate that you were conspiring to have them killed. Of course, he went so far as to actually plan the assassinations and make sure that you would be found to blame. You are arrested by the Emperor's guard and thrown into the arena for the crime of murder. It would be a miracle if someone came to your aid. When this happens, you will find yourself in the arena, and the people that you treated well will come out and help you. This leads to the game's two endings. The failure being death. The quote, Your demise is not unexpected. Of course they weren't going to let you win, but they weren't going to let anyone win. From your new viewpoint, of omniscience in death. You observe what you perceive as the new truth. Rome is but a spoiled trash heap of individual scheming bastards making calculated decisions to achieve victory over whoever they can. But you could be wrong. That would be fine too. Your profound experience of graceful disembodiment is interrupted by Jupiter himself. Relieved to find yourself comfortable in the afterlife, you punch Jupiter in the groin. He is not amused. Then there is the success ending. Your success is most unexpected, even to you. The Emperor is impressed by your tenacity and decides to let you live. You retire back to the villa and contemplate the cost of that life, the lives that have been lost because of you. You wonder, what is victory really? And now, that you have achieved success and authority through hard work and merit, and you tell others that hard work and merit are more important than sex and privilege. Perhaps they will listen. Or perhaps not. People are stupid fucks. There is also the total failure ending, in case you do not even make it to the final tournament, which I think is the most fitting ending. Your complete failure and eventual demise is not unexpected. It is the best to not take these things too personally. After all, you have traded in human traffic, and that is not exactly a kind thing to do. So why should you be expected the gods to have favored you? After you die, your family barely remembers to mourn. Your name is quickly forgotten. That is the entire story of the game. But why is it removed from Steam? Why is it so controversial? Disclaimer. Beyond this part, due to the nature of uh, the controversies related to this video, there will be hateful language as involved, transphobia, um, also anti-Semitism, white nationalism, Christian nationalism, and just Nazi extremism. So now, when you are aware, um, yeah, let's continue. In order to discuss the controversy, I will limit myself severely. The reason is because the developer of sharing a lot of private information over the internet. One such reason being where the developer was locked up for psychological care and the receipts from that incident. Therefore, I will limit myself to discuss Dive in Kala's video, how to lose friends and get banned on every platform, the Domino Saga, and the Steam user, Super Epstein Bros, summarizations of the events. 
Both Super Epstein Bros and Dive in Canada remain focused on what's happened on the Steam platform. I will bring up some of what happened outside of the platform in order to strengthen my version of their summarized storytelling. I will also warn you that from this point on, Due to the natures of the controversies, there will be controversial topics, phobic topics, and extremist topics. So, let's begin. After years of success, the developer decided to start working on DLCs for the game. This is quite common, and he decided to promise that some of them would be given out for free. He asked the players to subscribe to his services in order to see early access of the free LC. After the player subscribed and shared, boosting the engagement with the content, he ended up releasing the free LCs as DLC instead, asking the players to pay, having the founder the audience with empty words for engagement. At the same time, the updates notes became ever more politically active. They started adopting anti-mask points of use, as well as anti-trans. The earliest of these patch notes was published on Thursday, May the 6th, 2021. However, when looking into his social media, you can track it back further. Already, at the 11th of January 2021, did he start publishing transphobic content on his Gab account. He would keep doing this as well as engaging in tyrants on the Steam forum and on other social media, getting him banned numerous times on the Steam forums, limiting his availability to use his developer accounts on Steam, as well as getting banned from other platforms such as Twitter. August 2022 would be the final month for Domina on the Steam platform. It had been more than a year and a half with transphobic tyrants. Steam had asked him multiple times to stop these tyrants on the Steam platform, as well as stop going after negative reviews criticizing him for his decision of making free DLC paid. That August, he decided to raise the price of the game to reflect the increased prices of the games across the market. Whilst the price was increased at a fairly standard rate everywhere, in Israel it was increased greatly. This confused a lot of people. But once again, if you go back and look at his social media on the platform Gab, you can see him beginning to publish anti-Semitic posts on the 13th of October 2021. His final transphobic patch was published on August 31st. On the 2nd of September, Steam would take actions to remove Domina and the company from Steam. During this incident, he would alienate himself towards his consumers and towards social media actors who had previously acted in favor of him, sharing the game throughout the platforms. Since the banning of Domina, the dev has been in and out of psychotic care, and he keeps publishing transphobic, anti-Semitic, racist, and also, of course, anti-vax fake news across his platforms. He holds a great grudge against Steam, and he spends his days screaming conspiracy theories into the void. So, with all this said, what do I think of the game? Do I recommend it? I am dropping the voice now and grabbing some tea. That voice was bloody killing me. I was doing it for a recap on D&D, and they said that, hey, that's a pretty good voice, so I decided to test it for a video and... And I am not doing any videos like that again. So, would I get the game? No. And there is more than one reason for that. It is currently being sold for $20. I won't say where, but you will probably figure it out anyway yourself. The game is fairly basic, and you can buy better, more complex games for both cheaper and slightly more expensive prices. Two recent examples being Lethal Company. The company is high high. You'll have your very own ship, your very own crew. Your job, collect worthless garbage, return to the company desk. It's easy. Uh, 
Uh, we also, of course, have uh, the recent Hell Divers as a more expensive choice. Palworld, Palworld, I think it was named. Who here has never seen this game before? All right, I'm gonna explain this to you. Do you see that? You see how it looks like a Pokemon? That's Palworld. That's how it works. And also Beat Battle, I think it was named. There is, of course, also other gladiator management simulators who are both more expensive and cheaper prices. And there is also a gladiator game which mimics the same art style named Gladio. So, point number one, why not to get this game? It's not competitive. There is uh, other games out there, similar, different, and diverse, for both better prices, and uh, yeah, that's point number one. The developer of the game has kept doing updates to it, even after it has been removed from Steam. However, he has not updated the Steam version, Obviously because he doesn't have dev rights, so he probably cannot do that. But also he did fraudulent activities before uploading it on this new platform. So uh, I wouldn't trust him. It's honestly a person I could not trust, having had experience of already being, well, light defrauded. Not really defrauded, because it's just fake marketing, really. So point number two, I just can't trust this developer. Point number three. Having gone through the developer's history, it's clear that he has been unhinged for a while. And it began unraveling completely during the pandemic and has settled in. He is honestly a white nationalist Christian who I do not like that kind of people, I will be honest. As he has been in and out of psychotic care, I hope that there is people surrounding him that care about him and uh, hopefully help, tries to help him out, but uh, um, there is a thing I like to think about the situation, a sort of word salad to explain it, which is that it takes time to heal a wound and this guy has cut wounds that won't heal for a bloody while. So, probably be the best to just, you know, stay away from him. Hopefully he becomes better and I hope he stops screaming into the void. But uh, for now, I will just uh, fucking stay away. And I hope he in the future can learn to isolate himself. And uh, because he probably made more than enough money from the game. It was a Steam top one seller for a while. Him screaming on his social media, Steam doesn't want me to eat, is fucking bizarre when he's probably made a couple of millions from it. Oh yeah, I forgot to explain uh, what the uh, clue was in the game of uh, why of the developer's uh, upcoming extremism and uh, political views and so on and so on, and uh, the clue was that if you're looking across the audience in all the clips I shared, uh, all the audience is white, but the gladiators do exist across a diverse set of skin colors, so yeah, it's a clue of, I think, white supremacy already set in the early days, whether consciously or subconsciously, doesn't matter, uh, it's there and it's weird once you notice it. So, would I recommend the game? And uh, no, no, just no, no, just no. Go and play uh, anything more current, which is both sold for better prices and hold more content and more playable.
I completed this game in under two hours. It isn't really worth replaying, and the only people that is sort of are on the topic of the dev again supporting him is like Arshus. For some reason, has a video where he goes, oh, the developer hasn't said anything bad, it's based and whatever, not which is. And the dev has a amusing habit of uh, popping in little snippets of uh, God's honest truth in his patch notes, amongst other things, uh, John McCarthy did not kill himself, and most recently, take off the fucking mask. And somehow, I'm all for it. In fact, I'm entirely positive towards it. I view it essentially as another form of gatekeeping, flushing out the community, going, oh hey, this is a really uncontroversial opinion right now, it's literally the line pushed by the mainstream media at the moment, but you will have now for my sake, I'd like to recommend it again, I already done a recommendation video on it, and it's a damn fun little game, and there's also another way to support the author as well, as uh, he also makes some music too. So I'll leave a little link to his uh, web store thing down in the description below, because I don't think he's done anything wrong here. Rather, I think there's a convincing argument to be made that he's done everything right, in fact. Well, until next time, I've been Arch, thank you all very much for listening, and I hope to see you all again soon. Have a good day. I mean... We already know Arch is a fucking twistling, but he really fucking outs himself again and again and again, doesn't he? Uh, yeah. I do not recommend. Let's uh, go on and go to the bloody epilogue of this. So, that was Domina, and uh, what do we learn from this game? The game was good on the time it was released. However, in the current day climate, as the game's industry has developed, and not only the big industry, but also the small industry, as the technological convergence has given access to tool sets for uh, developers and simplified it so more people can create games, it, as well as giving more and better ability to everyone, it just doesn't remain competitive. That is besides how the game actually fell, which had actually nothing to do with its lack of competitiveness into the modern market, but more to do with the developer being a hateful person and willing to broadcast it out there, grabbing everyone's attention, and uh, of course, with everyone's attentions grabbed, he ruined the game and its possible future by being such a hateful little prick. And uh, with this, he has isolated himself into his sad little corner of the internet. Ultimately, I hope he gets uh, better and stops isolating himself in this manner and just removes himself completely from the online and digital environment, as obviously it's quite harmful for him and everyone around him. You can also, due to his extremist belief, easily track other extremists, such as I gave the example of uh, the infamous Quisling Arch being a person arguing, well, pro this game developer and his views such as anti-Semitism, white Christian nationalism, and general racism and whatever not so... Uh, yeah, fun, 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 you can track bloody weirdos this way. So, with all this said, what am I going to do next? I don't know, I was thinking about maybe doing a video on the state of gaming, I was also thinking about doing a video on historical canon, but uh, either way, this video is over, have a lovely day.